Yeah. Now, as I've been mentioning this morning, we've been waiting for both Greg Combe and Christine Mill to start talking at the Youth Climate Coalition Conference at Federal Parliament. The Green Senator Christine Milne is speaking now. Let's take a listen in. Uh, had there been a majority government, we would not have been in the position we are now in, and that is, after all your hard work, after the work of the multi-party climate committee, we are now in a position this coming Sunday to announce a package which will deliver a carbon price in Australia. So I want to thank all of you for the contribution that you have made, both through the election campaign and in the last year, in keeping this right up there, out there campaigning in the public. As I said this morning, there has not been a major public campaign from the broad environment groups, but I can say that AYCC has been there, the 100% Renewables campaign has been there, local climate action groups and Get Up have all been there, and that has been the major component of public campaigning. So you have done a great job. I have really appreciated it, so I think you should give yourselves a big clap for that. The one thing I, I heard as I just came in the door about a young person speaking at one of the UNFCCC meetings, and I have seen the AYCC delegations at those recent meetings in various parts of the world doing a great job, I might say. The sense that um, you've been meeting all my life, I think I heard Ellen uh, say about this young person, you know, you don't need to tell me that you need more time. Well, I can tell you that I was appointed to Australia's first ever uh, Greenhouse Gas Council, the Greenhouse, Australian Greenhouse Council, in 1990. So <laughs> I've been working on this all of your lives as well. And my message really is to say that you you cannot give up just because you are not able to persuade everybody of the level of this emergency as quickly as you need the action to be taken. Do not give up. It is very hard to keep on campaigning in the face of people saying it's not a problem, it's not urgent, we'll just do a bit here or a bit there. The main thing is if you believe in something then you keep on fighting for it and it will eventually happen. And so what we're going to see now in Australia is a carbon pricing mechanism and a package which will go beyond a carbon price but go right across the whole spectrum of things that we have been asking for. And that's where this is a package which is a platform for all of you to build on. Because I know there are going to be people here who are real advocates for renewable energy, who want to see 100% renewables as quickly as possible, which I do. There will be people in this room who've got a real passion about energy efficiency and ideas about how that can be translated through our houses, our commercial buildings, up to utility scale. People here who may be working on green design for cities and communities and thinking about how you might transition to public transport. People thinking about greening the land sector so that we maintain the carbon stores through our forests, that we actually build resilience in our landscapes by maintaining those natural systems. You are all working on those things, and those things will now, there will be a package of measures that will give you a platform on which to build. So as campaigners, that's what you need. But don't expect perfection. Perfection doesn't come out of parliaments. Perfection doesn't come out of a situation which is a negotiated outcome. So there will be things that you will be delighted about. There will be things that you are disappointed about. That reflects what happens when you have a negotiated agreement. But step back and think big picture for a moment. We are in a situation where in Durban this year it is unclear whether the world will even commit to a second commitment period of the Kyoto Protocol. We've got a situation in the US where Obama is struggling to make real uh, moves, particularly in, in market-based mechanisms, although he is achieving a lot, I have to say, in regulatory terms and in other ways, and particularly through the EPA there. We've got a situation where Greece is faltering and Europe is uncertain. So we have got a world that is uh, lacking in certainty right now, and we are bringing into that world some leadership from Australia. Now, don't underestimate that. People keep on saying on the other side of this debate, ah, oh, Australia's just got a few emissions, why would we bother? Who takes notice of us? 
Well, we are actually able now to inject some real optimism and momentum at the global level because Australia acted. Australia, a resource-based economy heavily dependent on fossil fuels, acted and was prepared to take this on right now at a critical stage in where the world is going in addressing climate change. So when this package comes out, look at it in that context. We are now in a position to go out there and sell this to the Australian community and then sell it overseas as well. And it will stack up very well compared with activities that are going on in other parts of the world and other pieces of legislation in other parts of the world. So we really need you, as I said to you this morning out there in the freezing cold, I don't want any of you getting sick right now. We need you to be out there for the winter break helping to bring to people's attention that this is your future. We are talking about 2050 here. We are talking about people being in their middle age at a time when we could be seeing catastrophic climate change, extreme weather events, deep uncertainty and conflict around the world as people are forced to move because of climate change already occurring, as we know. We so will see food inflation, all those things. So we need to be saying to people, stop just thinking about now and your own vested interest. Think about the world. Think about survival. Think about the fact that this is the century of the environment because it is the century of survival in the face of climate change. And perhaps the easiest way to explain it, which is what I've tried to do in several conferences, is to say to people that up until now, the whole political and economic system has been based on the idea that the Earth has an infinite capacity to provide resources, just infinite capacity to provide resources, and the assumption has been that the Earth has an infinite capacity to absorb wastes to atmosphere, ocean and rivers and so on. And what we now know is we live on a finite planet with a finite ability to provide for some resources and a completely finite capacity to absorb wastes. And we have now hit the perimeters we have now hit those limits. The earth cannot provide for an increasing population, the level of extraction of resources and the level of dumping of waste. And that means this century is the century we tackle that and the countries and the people who do tackle it are the people who are going to create jobs, provide solutions and become leaders in this century. And that is our job. If we're not going to take a lead in that in whatever profession we take, then we are really missing the opportunity to make a big contribution. So thank you again for what you're doing. I urge you to really get across the details in the package this weekend. And I look forward to campaigning on platforms with you from one end of the country to the other as we go out there challenging people and saying, get behind this. Let us price pollution. Let's actually secure a safe climate for the future. Let us be able to look one another in the eye. And I know you had a fantastic campaign a while ago about taking on grandparents, parents first, grandparents and so on. But it is a case of saying to people, look me in the eye and tell me you won't act on climate change because they can't, they won't be able to do that. So really important, we've got a big job ahead of us we need to legislate this package by the end of the year. We need to get it operational by the 1st of July next year. And then we need to celebrate with each other that this generation of young Australians has made an absolutely critical contribution to nation building in this country in this century. So thank you very much. So that was a pretty fired up Green Senator Christine Milner live from Parliament House in Canberra speaking at the Youth Climate Coalition conference there saying that the carbon price agreement to be revealed on Sunday should be regarded as a platform to build on in terms of further initiatives to address climate change. Christine Milner is saying Australia is showing leadership to countries around the world. We might just take a bit more of a